Oh, 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 folks, and welcome to a bit of a palate cleanse. Spell Force. Shadow of the Phoenix. Or just Spell Force. Not sure if Shadow of the Phoenix is just one of the expansions or what. But anyway, Spell Force. This is something I've been talking about for music. Okay, it's there, just faint as hell. Let me out tab for a second and hire it back up. Okay, there we go. Um, so yeah, Spell Force. This is something I've been talking about for quite a while, something I've really wanted to play uh, for the channel for quite a while. I've played a bit of it, like five levels in kind of thing. Not sure how many more there are, but um, yeah, I put a bit in, and it's quite the fun game. It's quite enjoyable. It's quite great. Um, you know how WoW is an uh, is an RTS RPG, an R uh, sorry RPG RTS. This is as well, except it goes it leans much heavier on the RPG side. As in, it looks like you're, you've just taken a character from. You know, Dungeon Siege, or you know, a, an ARPG, or you know, what have you, and stuck them into an RTS, rather than having, oh, he's troll, he can only do these, and you know, it, here's six slots that you throw items into, but it doesn't affect character model or anything. No, no, this is. Let me see, is this still out? No, oh, no, this is fine. Um, like, here is it. I can, like, you know, take. I just finished my Grim Dawn playthrough here on Durnan. Um, just take a moment to get back into the game for me. Uh, but anyway, I'll give it a second. Uh, you know, like how there's a here's a slot for head items, here's a slot for gloves, boots, this kind of thing. That's here. Um, you decide, like, okay, I want to level him up in melee. Oh, I like, want to make him good with two handed swords. Uh, I want him good in light armor. Want him good with fire magic. You know, like you can pick and choose. You make your own thing. For your solely for your main guy. Everyone else you have is set to how they are. You can give them different equipment, yeah, but that's it. And the music restarts every time you alt tap. Oh yeah, this is my um initial character. Uh new character. So Can't turn the character. Uh, so we'll play a dude, and we'll call him. How does this sound, Durgan? Durgan. I I'm noticing I lean towards the doors, and you know, I I'm noticing like a pattern in the names I come up with. Uh, it's sure, why not? So. We'll do the prologue. It's very slow as hell. This game is kind of slow, but why not? And the audio is still fine. Sorry. Keep out tab because I didn't really do an audio test. I just sort of winged it a bit. So, um. Yeah. Just, I don't want the audio test. It's so painful. But, uh, yeah. So we will be. I will be going with. Huh. Having a look at this. Oh, actually, I, I get it now. I get it now. Um, come on, let me back into the game. Okay, see here, light combat arts, and then specializations. So light combat arts deals with light, quick weapons, and armor that allows for freedom of, move, free, freedom of movement. The higher levels, good dexterity, and agility are required. And then you get piercing weapons. The use of uh, this ability allows the use of daggers, the quickest close-range weapon, as well as other trusting weapons. <laughs> uh, these are particularly suited to dexterous fighters, and those skilled in magic. Then there's light blade weapons, light blunt weapons, and light armor. But then you click here, and it changes, and your starting equipment does too. So you get large blade weapons, blunt weapons, heavy armor, shields. But actually, this is that is nice, depending on your spe what you specialize in and your abilities and what you specialize in determines your starting equipment. It's kind of a nice touch. 
than ranged weapons, bows and crossbows only. White magic. Life, which is healing and strengthening nature. Take, you can take control of animals. Uh, it's cure poison and disease. While boons is uh, buffs uh, allied units and is potent against the undead. Then there's fire, ice, and earth. Enchantment, which allows you to mind control enemies. Uh, offensive, which causes a, which can confuse enemies, and you can electrocute people. And then defensive is you can drain mana from people and transfer it to yourself or to allies. And keep in mind, this is just what you start off with. So, say if I wanted to start off with heavy combats, large blade weapons. But then I was like, hmm, you know what, I really want to do necromancy. You can do that. Say if you really want to, you know, play a, a bowman. That's fine. You then can later on go into light armor. You aren't like locked in or on, it's just what you start out with, you know? So yeah, I'm going to go with large blade weapons. And as far as I know in this game, it's, uh, well, I'm coming to terms with it in um, you know ARPGs, but as far as I know with this game, you do have a bit of a leeway with the whole how you build your character. I'm hoping so. Uh, basically, I, I do want to have a you know guy, heavy plate armor, two-handed sword, and skeletal minions. I, I like that idea. You can also, as a part of the whole RPG thing, you go to a shop to buy better iterations of your spells. You don't just like level them up or whatnot. You buy them from a shop, which fits in with like Dungeon Siege 2, for example. I love that game as a kid. Okay. No. 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 Yes, I am the main villain. No. 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 This is like a generally constipated look. He just ends up looking like he should be the main character of a different game. No. Okay, he could work actually. Um, some of these end up looking like the, you know, the secret, like the Serious Sam fans from the some of the Serious Sam games, like the weird guys with the huge brains and all that. The faces end up looking like them. It's unnerving to say the least. Uh, so yeah, we'll stick with this guy. He's actually the best looking of them all. It's yeah. So anyway, points remaining. I'm not sure if you can spend these after you get into the game if you don't start with them. So, uh, strength, more damage to enemies in close combat. Uh, stamina increases health. Dexterity increases probability of actually hitting the enemy. Agility uh, decre decreases probability of being hit. Int increases speed at which mana reserves are replenished. Wisdom increases the maximum amount of reserves. Or charisma uh, boosts positive spells like healing and increases the chance of mind magic working. It's kind of like D&D um, &D in a way, ain't it? Doesn't the uh, land hands roll off of um, like charisma? I haven't actually gone to play D&D &D before. I've seen bits online, but that's it. So I'm thinking... I have no idea what I'm doing, it's just like, these four seem really relevant to me, and I know I want to dabble a bit with magic, 
but these four seem really relevant to me, as I'm going to be predominantly trying to stop people. So, Durgan here. So, um, being able to hit people, not being hit as much, and hit them harder, and being able to take hits, it's all seemed pretty valuable. So, yes. It all began with the discovery of the old fire and the secret of the convocation. Thirteen mages blinded, driven by the greed for divine power. Power. And under the bondage of the circle, their armies unleashed death and destruction. Bonded with the power of ancient runes. Cursed to eternal life and eternal death. Until the last day of the old era had dawned. to witness the day of my ultimate triumph, poor old man. <laughs> no, to witness your downfall. <laughs> you cannot win. The Convocation is a lie. It will destroy all of us. So, It hasn't aged well, but still, that is a, a, a still a great intro. Wanted to make some comments. I well, just love the, some of the face the villain was pulling. It's hilarious. Like just at start, he's like so or something. It was, it was funny to me. Just the faces on him. <laughs> Rune sent us. He needs the power of the Rune Warriors. The Northern Realms are in danger. 
Rowan knows I will never serve a circle mage again. My powers are exhausted. I have seen quite enough misery and bloodshed. Rowan will have to look for somebody else. That's why he sent us. A very special rune lies concealed somewhere in these lands. We're here to search for it. But we were attacked and Lev is wounded. He needs your help. We need your help. And I hardly have any choice. Very well. I will help you. Where is Lev? I lost sight of him somewhere behind the gate there. I hope he's still alive. These damned orcs. I'll look for him. You stay here by my hut. Thank you, Tahira. It's good to have you back with us. <laughs> oh, that was a really strange camera angle. Welcome to the world of spell force. In this prologue, we will explain the game to you. Let's start with some general information. The name of the main character in the prologue is Tahira. She is a combination of fighter and sorceress. From now on, we will refer to the main character as the Avatar. I see berries here. It will be relevant. Once All the different resources. The, prologue, the game will continue with the Avatar you selected before starting the game. Oh, this brings me back. Whenever you hold the mouse pointer, it feels like a very old intro to a game. Help window with additional information will appear in the bottom left corner of the screen. Uh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm just again uh, audio testing. In, I just want to. It could be just his. I'm gonna wear it all slightly. Then again, part of the issue for me was that. Hmm. I wonder if it's a speech that's. Really loud for ye. When you are asked to click on something, this means a click with the left mouse button. We'll tell you about the right mouse button a little later in this presentation. Okay. Presentation. Oh my God. Yeah, they they go for verboseness here. Button in the upper right. You can save the game or change the game settings at any point in time. They should have said menu because options is in here, which does you not help. Select your avatar by clicking on Tahira in the game world. Does Very good. You can move the view with either the cursor keys or with the mouse by holding down the right mouse button. You can also adjust the view by moving the mouse pointer to the appropriate edge of the screen. There is something funny that you'll get to see. The unit is marked with a colored ring. Your own units have a green ring. Enemy units, a red and neutral or allied units, a blue ring. Uh, there's some just at the end of the tutorial the left, that's you can see the really selected units and some additional information such as name, health condition, and amount of mana. Uh, there's something like right at the end, and it's just hysterical to me. You'll see it happen a, a, a few times throughout the game. Um, I'll wait for it to turn up before I say any more, but it's hysterical to me. You can select your avatar at any time by clicking on the portrait button in the upper left corner of the screen. By clicking on the portrait button with the right mouse button, the view will be moved to the appropriate the, unit. These are grouping things. Move to here or down the path to the east and through the open stone gate to the bindstone, a large boulder, by clicking the right mouse button next to it. This starts off very slow. I'm doing the tutorial because there is lore here. The stone offers the avatar an opportunity to connect his room with this place. Should he perish, he will appear in the last bindstone used. Enemies are able to sever the connection to a bindstone if they attack it. Thus causing you to lose one active bindstone. 
Select the bind stone with a click. I guess lose them all, you uh are boot you lose the level. Lose well, game over, I guess. At the bottom edge of the screen you will find the action bar. A new symbol for activate the spine stone should have appeared there. Click on that symbol. The bind stone will light up and is now active. You are now bound to this spine stone. In the lower right, you will find the overview map. Black areas have not yet been explored and are automatically uncovered when you approach them with units. Your avatar has a greater view radius, so he will uncover a larger area. The dots on the overview map are in different colors. Green dots represent your own units, red enemy and blue neutral or allied units or buildings. A few special objects such as monuments are marked in yellow. Continue along the path to the east. Something I wanted to say, but I don't remember what. This is your room power. With every worker here you produce, you lose room power. Spell Force offers you the option of witnessing the events of the game from different views, including the third person perspective where you see the action from a position directly behind and slightly above your avatar. To change the view, press the page up key to zoom in and the page down key to zoom out, or simply turn the mouse wheel. Uh, can I be honest with you, I don't remember much of the voice acting in this game, but from what I've, we've, I've seen so far, I think this guy might be one of the better voice actors for it. The rest of the people sound really off. There's, there's. A, I remember getting a general vibe from this game that this was like some team's like early project. Yeah. You know? Um, because it just feels like it's a great idea. Like you know, great. You know, it's got great promise, but it just felt very um, rough and unpolished. You know, just in the they were kind of new to this kind of realm. You know. That's how I remember it feeling to me. And so far, yeah, I'm seeing where I'm coming from, you know? By moving the mouse wheel downwards or pressing page down, the camera will zoom out into an almost vertical perspective. Now, when you move the mouse wheel upwards or press page up, you will see the normal isometric views from different distances. Doesn't like moving when she's in this now mode. Change to the third person perspective by zooming in closer. This is only possible if your avatar is inside the field of view. Hmm. In the third oh. person perspective, yeah, you, you can control your avatar directly with the cursor keys or with the A, D, S, and W keys. If you hold down the right mouse button, you can change the view direction. Otherwise, operating spell force in this perspective is identical with the isometric view. Follow the path in third person perspective toward the east to the next stone gate. This is. It, I'm gonna be honest, I don't blame you if you hate this intro. You can change it's to very third slow. Person perspective anytime during the game. But for now, we will assume you will be using the isometric view. And I, to be fair, will probably will be. Change back to the normal isometric view with the mouse wheel. I just feel like I should stick with the tutorial. An enemy on goblin is lurking around the next corner. He isn't that dangerous. When you hold the mouse pointer over him, a bar will show you his health condition. Wait. Select your avatar and click the button on the goblin. Your avatar will attack the goblin. As soon as he has been defeated, we will continue. The goblin's corpse will light up, which indicates that he was carrying an object with him. You can now take possession of this object. It's a match. Take up a position close to the dead goblin and click on the corpse with the right mouse button. 
You can then see what object the goblin had with him on the left-hand edge of the screen. Click on the shield to take it with you. It will be automatically added to your inventory. The shield increases your avatar's armor class when you are carrying it. With a higher armor class, you lose fewer life points when an opponent hits you with a weapon. To open your inventory, click on the backpack symbol in the action bar, which can be found on the bottom of the screen. A window will open, and on the left you can select the different categories of your inventory. Click on the ring symbol, which stands for equipment. On the left, you now see the unused equipment. In the middle, the objects your avatar is currently using, and on the right, your character's current data. We'll deal with this data later. To equip your avatar with the shield, you must first pick it up with the mouse. Click on the shield, and then click on the free section for the left hand beside the torso. Now close the inventory with a click on the backpack or the check mark in the lower right of the window, or by simply pressing I again. In the upper left hand corner, you can see a clickable portrait of the avatar. We call these buttons portrait buttons. The green bar in the portrait indicates the character's health. When the character is injured, it will change color from green to yellow to red, depending on the severity of the injury. When the character has no more life points, he perishes. Your avatar's life points will, however, regenerate with time. The blue bar represents mana, magic energy. When a character's mana reserves have been depleted, he cannot cast any more spells. Mana is also replenished with time. Follow the path through the next stone gate until you have reached the wounded lev. I should have stuck with my books. I hope you haven't forgotten your healing arts, Tahira. Help me. Please heal me. So target him, then hit this. If someone offers you a dialogue, a symbol will float above the character. If this person is relevant to the main quest, it will be an exclamation mark. If the person is only relevant for optional side quests, it will be a question mark. Select your avatar, approach Lev, and click on him with the right mouse button to begin the dialogue. I thank you, Tahira. Without you, I would have been lost. I thank Aonir that Kaile found you. What happened, anyway? You're seeking a rune? Yes, a special rune. Rowan is certain it must be somewhere in the ruins of Ankbrunt. But the ruins are just swarming with orcs. We had to flee. Only Joshua managed to hide. Kaile knew where your house was. That's why we fought our way through to you. Please, you must help us. Hmm. All right. I will fetch your rune. You stay here and recover for a while. As you command, take good care, Tahira. Here, this spell scroll. I captured it from one of the orcs. Maybe it will be of some use to you. Keep following the trail. Perhaps you'll run across Joshua somewhere. May the gods grant that he is still alive. You have a healing spell at your disposal. If you wish to use a magic spell, there are two possibilities. The simplest possibility is offered by the click and fight system. To use this, select Lev. Under your avatar's portrait button, all meaningful actions for the selected... Thanks for healing me. Oh yeah, he, this is old. <sighs> the click and fight system can be... This is painful. I do acknowledge that. ...damaging spells or melee attacks on hostile targets. Can't move forward to it's done Gabin. Gabin. Hostile actions will be offered. The alternative to this is the classic method. Select your avatar, 
Then click the healing spell in the action bar, and then click... I'm gonna lower him slightly. Just thinking that if there is a fight, someone will have a raised voice and... You know, be a nuisance. I'm probably gonna do a really long prologue episode. It's already 30 minutes in and we're barely into this map. I'm just waiting for the tower to tab back in. It doesn't really take on the tower tabbing. So it's a little uncooperative. They did update this game recently, it seems, before you had to keep entering in the game code. So you could, um, like every time it would open it, you'd have to re-enter the uh, code for the game. You know, the, like the, the one you get in the box. Every time. And it's such a pain. They seem to have fixed it. Seem to have. Speak to Lev again. You have received additional experience points. I think it was magic spell still skull. going even after I was finished. It contains no, I'll tap it. Sound. Once you have collected a specific number of experience points, your avatar will move up one level, will become stronger, and will be able to learn new skills. You receive experience points by defeating opponents and successfully solving quests. When you die, you lose a small amount of experience points every time. Do not remember that. See, and you got to go over to Next, tutorial. Your avatar should learn the magic spell you have just received. Oh, I forgot you could learn these. I thought it was once often. Open your inventory and click on the symbol for Spellbook. So now we've got on Fireball. The left, you will see the inventory for magic Single target. Spells. On the right, your Spellbook, and above it, the so-called Magic Memory, with nine free spaces at the current moment. Click on the scroll in the inventory to place it on the mouse pointer. Then click any free space in your spellbook. You now have transferred a new spell into your spellbook. You can enter any number of spells into your spellbook, but you can only simultaneously memorize and use ten of those magic spells in your magic memory. Learn the fireball magic spell by clicking on the fireball symbol in your spellbook and then click on any free space in your magic memory. Her nose looks really messed up over there on the little small portrait. Like she got a really botched nose job. Follow the path until you see the Minotaur. Use the fireball spell to defeat the Minotaur. Damn. Farbo did plenty of damage, and then the dot did it. Did, did, did guy in? Many creatures are partially or completely resistant to specific types of magic. Your avatar can also use rare objects found in the course of the game to protect himself better from magic attacks. Behind the next gate, a fire elemental creature awaits for you. This creature is completely resistant to your fire magic. Continue along the path. If you hold that mouse button, you can uh, if mouse wheel. Your magic spell you can rotate. A fire elemental creature. If a creature has resisted a magic oh. spell, you will see white bouncing sparks. Maybe not. After this, defeat the fire elemental creature in close combat. Every sets. Yeah, this. The lines must hold. The sound sonnet. <laughs> it's an ambush. Oh, it's not. You started it. Okay, let's just see how the audio is. Uh. Yeah, that's. Might be fine. 
Played a little fast and loose with this, and as such, I'm paying for it. Just, I did want to have to come into this tutorial and play it to try and audio test it. I tried to do the free play mode, and it just did not want to cooperate. Thinking about it, I could have used the saves from the, my previous time playing, but I didn't even realize I had them until the I started playing. The was carrying a hero's rune and four objects. Take possession of me. So the kit you need for the rune warrior. Beside your main character, you now have up to five heroes at your disposal. The heroes are your strongest allies and may have magic powers. Indeed, but they are set the in how they are. You just found Can't change them at all. Skilled long-range fighter. The rune establishes the hero's characteristics and abilities. In the course of the game, you will find more runes and also replace some of the older runes. Get five a total, and to different you, type of workers. You must use the hero's rune in your rune table, which you always have with you, and then find a hero's monument for the summoning procedure. Open your inventory and go to the category Room Board. To be honest, I could have teach you most of this stuff, but... Like myself, I knew most of this stuff already. But... Again, there's... Some is some story here that's... Semi-relevant. On the left side, you will see your currently unused rooms, and on the right, the rooms ended in the rune board. In the upper half of the room table, you will find the spaces for the heroes' rooms, and below, the spaces for workers' rooms, subdivided into light and dark races. Depending on which level your avatar has, you can apply up to five rooms at once. Click on the rune of the hero, and place it in one of the empty fields of the rune tablet located at the top. Now you will have to arm the hero. You should have received a bow, a dagger, and two pieces of armor. Go into the inventory and select the category Equipment. Ah. On the right side of the window, you will now see two portraits. Select the lower portrait and give your hero the four new objects from the left side of the inventory. The bow must go into his left hand. That's the space on the right hand side. They throw me for a bit. If your avatar or a hero cannot use an object, it will be marked with a red background. Close your inventory. Yes, master. Follow the path to the Great Monument. This is the Hero's Monument. You can teleport between these. Go right up to the Hero's Monument, select it, and click on the rune symbol in the action bar. Aside from the hero monument, the symbol of a hand appears in the selection window. You can inform yourself of the rune power of your avatar. Every time you call upon a hero, or later on, even a worker, you lose a bit of your rune power, and calling upon them takes a bit longer every time, too. Rune power regenerates itself automatically in the course Destiny of time. Wait. Now. now you can summon the hero. Select the Let's monument go. and click on the symbol for the hero in the action bar. After a few seconds, the hero should appear. I'm like a man. A second Quickly portrait now. button for your new hero should now appear in the upper left. You can now command Quickly the now. hero. If you want to select several units simultaneously, you can hold down the left mouse button in the game world and drag a frame around both characters. As soon as you release the left mouse button, the selection is established. You can combine combat units to form groups. 
To do this, select the units and click on one of the small buttons at the top of the screen in the middle. Or, hold down the control key and select a number key from 1 to 6 for the respective group. Once you have defined a group, a portrait button will appear at the top of the screen with the number of units in the group. The functionality of the portrait button is identical to your avatar. You can now very quickly select a group by clicking on the appropriate portrait button or pressing a number key from 1 to 6. Sorry, I was just checking again the audio. Come on, back into the game. Went back in, it booted me out. Come on. One time it's crashed. Because I would have to do all that over again, I didn't save. All's good. And it booted me out again. <sighs> it's because I kept trying to get into it so many times and because I was anxious. I further toward the south. I shall not fail to adventure. No, 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 no. You have a fight with the undead Forward. ahead of you. Together now. with your hero, you can win Let's this go. fight. Let's go. Use your magic to defeat order. the undead. Let us lower the sound slightly. Let's go. Should you want to further test your fighting skills, turn north here. Otherwise, follow the path farther towards the south. Now. We can actually come back here. But let's be honest, it really doesn't matter. So there's a skeleton over here. Quickly now. Let's go. Yeah, I can't bring myself to do any more here. I'm sorry. Follow the path until you find them. This is the most painful part of the game. Can be identified by the rotating coin above their head. That must be awkward. You come home to your family and there's just a coin floating above your head. You can buy and sell all kinds of objects from a merchant. Go up to the merchant and speak to him by clicking on him with the right mouse button. A window convenient. So it's worker. Menu. On the left of the menu, you will see your objects, and on the right, the merchant's objects. Your available money and the price of the selected objects are displayed in the middle. 100 copper coins make one silver coin, and 100 silver coins make one gold coin. Objects in Spell Force are divided into five categories. The five symbols beside your inventory and the merchant's inventory will be dark if you or the merchant have no objects in this category. You want to sell the gem to get money for a purchase. Shall not fail. Quickly now. Select the lowermost symbol to open the category quest and value objects. Click on Let's the gem. Go. The object you are offering will be marked green. And in the middle, you will see the price the merchant wants to pay. Click on sell. 
quickly now. Now you can buy something else with the money. Click on the rooms category and purchase the human worker room. Conclude the trade by clicking on the check mark on the lower left in the window or by pressing the escape key. Forward. Open your inventory, select the category Rune Board, and place the human world rune in the slot with the human portrait yes. on the lower left of the rune now. board. Close your inventory. You know, it feels awkward to talk because this guy just keeps talking. Like, he just never stops talking. But yeah, you can see the cap, a number of workers and warriors. There's ways of improving that, but. Uh. Yeah, there's ways of improving that, but uh, you can travel from one bind stone not yet. to another bind stone you have already activated. To do this, select your avatar and go to the bind stone. Click on it with the right mouse button and select your destination. You can try this out now if you want. When you are done, follow the path to the human monument. There. Speak to Joshua, the man directly beside the monument. Tahira, so the others found you. Yes. You look oh, just like me. Were you able to find out where the rune is, Joshua? In the Ark's camp. I think it is in possession of their leader. Be careful. Those beasts are tough. You'll have to prepare yourself well. Once you've conquered them, bring the rune to me. I will turn it over to Master Rome. Else. You must kill the leader of the orcs. Bring the rune to me as soon as you found him. You should now have received a quest. Open your inventory and select the quest book page. So the first orc camp and In the, the second. Of the window, you will see all your current uncompleted quests, and on the right, a detailed view of the currently selected quests. Here I am. You have received the quest, the lost rune. When you click on this quest, the individual steps of this quest will appear on the right. Already completed steps will be displayed darkened. When you hold the mouse pointer over one of these individual steps, a help window will additionally appear in the lower left in case you have forgotten something. Close your inventory. Go to the monument, select it. He's a bit behind. In the action bar. More than a bit. But yeah, this is what the game's like, and it's. I really like it. Though the camera. The scrolling the system is annoying. The monument, things get serious. Normally, <laughs> when enemies discover your newly established settlements, they will do all they can to destroy you as quickly as possible. On this map, however, you can take your time. You can now summon human workers. Select the monument and click on the worker symbol in the action bar. At your service. The worker will appear in a couple of seconds. You may also click the symbol several times to order more workers. Produce at least five workers. I'm on it. The room. When you have selected the monument, you will see numbers indicating your population limitations below. The upper number indicates how many workers of this race you currently have, and the maximum number you are allowed to have. Yeah, if you send them to do something else, they'll drop whatever they have. It's not like, wow. The maximum number of Warcraft. increases when you construct larger headquarters. Ah, that's it. 
On the upper right, you will now find a portrait for human workers. The number indicates how many human workers are currently not doing the job. You can select the free worker with a click on the portrait button. Workers can collect different resources depending on their race. Human workers can chop trees, collect stone, Building or mine needed. ore. To the left of the monument, you will find a stone quarry, and to the right, an ore deposit. The next forest is located to... Ah, the they also join. Good. To have workers collect a resource, select one or more workers, and then click with the right mouse button directly on the tree, stone, or an ore deposit. Only workers may figure in this selection. Building completed. On the top edge of the screen, you will see the amount of resources you already have acquired. You can use resources to construct buildings, or summon combat units to a monument. Select workers and send them with the right mouse button to chop down trees, collect stone, um. mine ore, until you have at least 50 units of each of these three basic resources. Very good. You now have sufficient resources to construct your first buildings. This is a terrible placement, but I you can't build on select roads. So click on the uh. building symbol on the action bar. A selection of buildings will appear. Click on the woodcutter hut and select the site in the game room near the forest to start construction by clicking the left mouse button. All right then. Here I am. The selected worker will now begin to erect the building. You can select additional on, workers and send them to the construction site with the right click. Should you want construction right. to be less fast. Now select some other workers and build a quarry near the stone resources and a mine near the iron. In each of these resource buildings, can zoom out further. Can advance to the status of so -called craftsmen. It's a little more frustrating than I remember. Have different clothing and special tools, and Break twice over, as efficient as simple workers. When you select the finished building, Make then you go. can see how many craftsmen are already assigned to this building in the selection window. When you click an empty symbol, and there is another free worker available. He will be assigned to the building. When you click an occupied symbol, a worker will be released. As good as done. Those workers that construct a building automatically take over the free jobs in the building in so far as they are available. When you send a worker to a building with the right mouse button, you can fill free jobs. This way, workers who, for example, chop down trees, will automatically look for free jobs in woodcutter houses and start doing them in a short time. Building completed. Wait until all three buildings are finished. Should construction work fail to continue on the building, this means you have mistakenly removed all the workers from the construction site. Now your resources should increase much faster. Keep an eye on the individual stocks and, if necessary, assign your workers to other jobs. Of the room. I'm on it. In order to recruit a larger army, you will need food. Humans are very flexible and are able to catch fish, hunt or breed animals and grow grain. In the area surrounding your base, you will find a number of animals. Build a hunting lodge to gather food. Additionally, construct a small headquarters so that you will have up to 30 workers Here at your disposal. Gather from these yet or fish. Um, As good as in here. Building completed. You 
can send up to five yes. workers to the hunting lodge to collect food Let's faster. The amount of the food you have stored determines the maximum size of your army. The flags on the buildings show you whom the buildings belong to and if workers are currently active in this field. Oh, and this upgrades the amount of if you look units you can have. You will see that the lake behind the human monument is full of fish. There are also some berry bushes on the bank of the lake, but these serve exclusively as food for elves. Oh, really? Oh, I didn't realize that's the elven only. That's now you oh, are elven only. to defend your settlement. Build two towers in the area around the stone slabs, as enemies might come from this direction. Yes. I have to delicately carry back a single drumstick. At your service. All right then. Here I am. Here I guess. I oh, am. Yeah, this is. No wait. That that's the way out. This is a different thing. I think that could be the second base. If you you can't queue them up to do their own like separate jobs, like StarCraft, it will send them both to the same job. This is actually a good game. It just got a cripplingly slow start. Like this tutorial is terrible. Like seriously. Ready to go. I'm ready to build this with this in mind. Oh well. This boosts food production. Yes. They'll just run to this and run back. They try to queue it, but you can't queue it in this game, as far as I can tell. And at least on I can say Warcraft, or yeah, in Warcraft, where if you and actually Starcraft in the campaign of Wings of Liberty, if you send more than one person to build, you don't get paid charged extra. It's Still the same amount. I swore you could zoom out further. Game speed option. Building completed. Master of the rune. Let's get cracking then. Ready to go. Actually, I think this might be too far away from this. resources but I uh, would get better with the whole placement soon enough I'm sure some goblins are attacking your settlement you will soon hear an alarm signal and see a red symbol on the overview map indicating the site of the attack 
Defend your town with your avatar and your heroes. Christ, they're horrific looking. Better is good at killing each other. It's just a you know basically a sub fight and between two handless people. Whenever you hear an alarm signal, you can use the space bar to immediately switch to the site of the action. Portal to the end of the prologue. If you can't reach it soon enough, you can have them repaired. Select one or more workers for the job and click with the right mouse button on the damaged structure. Yes. You can not only summon workers at a human monument, but also human warriors and mages. Single warriors summoned at back. a human monument will not be as strong as no your problem. avatar or your hero. With sufficient resources, however, you can produce whole armies. Ready to go. Single warriors. What about warriors that are married? Now How are they? To build an army. I say to myself, as if the guy can hear me snarking. Four. Three more workers. God, the hell, I have too many. Hundred food. Here I am. Let's get cracking then. But the game will get into it basically once you get it, you know, into the first level. This is just cripplingly slow. Battle units will be manufactured in this forge. If you have several forges, you can produce units faster. Here we go. Battle units are also summoned to human monuments. If you would like to establish a rally point for new units, select the human monument and click with the right mouse button on the desired destination. The appearance of a little flag indicates that the summon combat units Building will assemble at this point. Yes, I'm on it. Select a human monument and summon at least three recruits and three scouts. If you are unable to produce units, you will find text marked in red in the help window, which specifies the reason why. These are uh, a missing or unoccupied building. He never shuts up. Resource. Basically, these are light melee units, these are light range units. So, nice little basics. They're turning out quite nice and fast right now. Uh. The orcs have their own scouts always on the lookouts for enemies. If one of these scouts discovers your settlement or your warrior, he will return to his headquarters and sound the alarm. A scout is about to discover your settlement, which is shown by a yellow symbol appearing on the overview map. Destroy the opponents before they can get away. Ready and able. Send them to the River of Souls. That's the certainly of a boast battle cry. Oh, to be fair, right there, they were defending. The enemy headquarters will eventually notice the missing scout and start searching for him. You have, however, game time and can use it to quickly produce more scouts and recruits. So it is important for you to destroy the buildings in the enemy camp as quickly as possible. Because new opponents are continuously being recruited there. Apparently, these double whatever food you get from the local you will producers. They have to be nearby. Select your human monument. So, 
So, uh, these are very important to have when you do these. How many combat units you have, as well as the maximum number you can support. The current maximum is 10. Uh, you're a bit slow on that, mate. Inside the headquarters buildings, you can use food to increase the maximum size of your army. Army so marches on its stomach. Headquarters building. In the action bar below, you will now see a symbol for food. When you hold the mouse pointed directly above it, the costs for this increase will show up in the help window. When you click once on the symbol, the maximum number of combat units will increase from 10 to 15 for 100 food units. The increase from 15 to 20 units already costs 200 food units. Increase the maximum number of combat units to at least 20 units by clicking the symbol twice. Since it's dark, the hunters have not acquired sufficient food, and you will have to wait a while. Well, oh, I jumped the gun. Keep oh, going. In the small headquarters, you can support a maximum of 30 combat. I kind of presume that enough to rebuild it. Large headquarters, which will become available later, afford additional possibilities to increase the maximum level. If you later decide to play with two allied races, then the maximum number of combat units for the entire army applies, with the races also sharing the food. Produce additional scouts and recruits, and destroy the orc camp in the east. Secure more resources, and ensure you have sufficient food. See, there are just a uh, total of like eight, eight of these, ten of these. Eyes open, sword ready, sir. Destiny away, let's go. So, makes it nice and compact. Somewhere here. Is that thing cost me supplies? What here do? I like just wait. Don't count you. I like just flinging it back here. I know. Just gets uh, gets it out of the way, and there's plenty of stuff back here. Maybe it's because in the fog of war, there I can't put it down. I know sometimes it gets finicky. Breaks over, time for work. Okay, no, we can't put it down on paths. Don't mind. Actually, was this even built on a path? Yeah, it was. I didn't just didn't notice. I remember building one here. Maybe I just remember building that. Or maybe I built that, uh, this instead of that one. Ah, <sighs> ruining my fun. Fine, build it here. I'm ready. 
I'm ready. Follow me. Okay, there's nothing up here. Good silver, which is Elven only, I think. There's no attack move. Again, like I said, this does end up feeling very much the, um, you know, someone's early attempt at making a game, you know? I mean, an early attempt, but it does feel very unpolished. And it's, it came out at the same time as Warcraft 3. Certainly, bigger company, but does it, like I said, it does end up feeling like a, um, you know, a novice production, if you get me. And that's not a condemnation, it's just simply they aren't some, like, veteran team. Um, it's actually kind of cute in its own way. Uh, it's, I suppose that's just some kind of condescending. But, um, just, uh, just like looking at the clunkiness of it, you know, the lack of an attack move, the... Just, you know, there's just some quality of life things I'm used to. It just ends up look, making it, well, just ends up making it look, um, I don't know, I guess kind of rookie in a way. So, just leave the auto attack. Search corpses or chests when enemies are near. Ah. There is a chest in the orc camp. Stand close to it with one of your characters, and you will be able to open the chest by clicking with the right mouse button. Take possession what of both plants. You have just found the construction plan oh, for a new building. And the unit plan for the human unit <laughs> That's hysterical. They just don't give a damn. I'm being attacked. Uh. Go to the plans page. And here you have an overview of which building and unit plans you have for all six races. On the right hand side in the window, you can select the race. Select humans. Place the unit plan in a free space among the units in the lower line. You can now produce this unit at your human monument, provided you have the required buildings and sufficient resources. Place the building plan in an empty slot on the line of building icons. First line may be full, so you might have to place the right hand. Now your workers are able to construct the temple of life. Close your hand. If you want to summon human units with magic powers, you will need an Arya, a magic power. Near the Orca, you will find an Arya spring. Simple workers are not able to collect. You will need 
the special. Put up an Arya shrine near the Arya spring in the Temple of Light in your main <laughs> Just took a few shots and ran away. You must click on the pointer on the right of the uh, games. What does the rune desire? I love a little no, uh, little shits the workers give. It's Absolutely. hysterical. Unlike a man. Follow me. Yes, forward. Okay. Let's go kill some younglings. Oh, I didn't actually grab all the troops. Oh, well, that was, I had sent over this way. Alright. here while we're you know waiting for stuff to be built. Yes, on my way. Okay, stop, go this first, then you can go work on that. Where'd I go thirty area? Don't stand in it. Like the voice acting of most of the people does sound very, you know, rookie. You know, that's part of why I was saying it does end up feeling like um, some company's early attempt at a game. It just feels unpolished in a f few categories. It's not a condemnation of it. It's still a great game. It's just on a Taurus. It just, you know, that's just in, you know, reality of the situation. You know. I think it's got five workers can work in the Aryan shrine and collect. I, I, I think that you know, the temple of light serves to invoke units with magic powers comparable to the forge for a weapon production. Several temples allow you to invoke magic units more quickly. Yes, that way. Additionally, you can buy go. upgrades at the temple of light. Upgrades are possible on several buildings, and they generally improve your units as well as offering other benefits. But um, if you select the temple and have sufficient, beside the Aria Spring, you will see Lenya plants and Moon Silk. Both resources cannot be used by humans, but play an important role for other races. Um, like again, I'm not, I'm not con condemning this or anything. I think this game was, you know, like it shows a lot of potential. It shows it, it's a really cool, it's a really great concept. It just is rather unpolished and uh, unrefined. Um, again, to go, bring it back to the game I've just finished, uh, Grim Dawn, I was saying about how I was kind of refer referring to what my buddy had said. That's going to be in my uh, first episode of Titan Quest, and then the you know, my, the co-op with Grim Dawn. Um, uh, basically, Titan Quest was, you know... Grim Dawn is a polished-up Titan Quest. Like, they tried out the prem the the style with uh, Titan Quest, and Grim Dawn is they do the thing again, but they realize mistakes they made in the past, and they work on them, and they fix it up. Like, uh, Constitution. That little healing mechanic was really helpful in Grim Dawn, and Titan Quest is le lesser for the for for not having it, because yeah, the just the healing is so much more of a, a nuisance in that game compared to Grim Dawn. You're uh, noticeably a lot weaker in Grim Dawn at the start than you are in. I'm sorry, you're noticeably more weaker in Titan Quest at the start than you are in Grim Dawn. And that is just one of the ways you are. So, like, Titan Quest showed promise, and it's like a very interesting concept. 
but it was lacking on a bit of polish. And same thing here. I kind of be honest with you, I'm tired, and I've just generally lost my train of thought. So I'm not even sure if that was what I was trying to say. But again, me saying this isn't polished, or, you know, it's it kind of it comes off as a bit of a rookie thing, it's not a condemnation of it, as strange as that may sound. It's just simply, it looks, you know, it's like it's got a great potential, it's got like a really cool concept. It just feels that it is lacking on a lot of polish. So, that's all. Produce at least three clerics. Should you be unable to produce the unit, the button will be darkened. In this case, move the mouse over the button and follow the instructions in the help window. In case you already have the maximum number of units, you can select units and destroy them by fight, using sir. the key K. Yep, just triggered heart attacks. Just broke out the dead note. I actually remember seeing a Batman anthology, and they just, I, sw I, s I swear, you know, cross my heart and all that, they just made ba Batman, uh, Bruce Wayne look like fucking light from Dead Note in, um... At your service. Uh, in one of the episodes, in one of the, um, uh, things. It was, um, Arkham Knight anthology. Like, just in one of them, he looks like fucking life. He's waiting for him to break out the dead note. There we go. Now I can make you. Upgrade complete. A new skill is available. Oh, that was actually just part of faith. My mind blanked. Uh, Clerk receives shield and uh, has increased mana reserves and accelerated mana regeneration. Wondering why it costs so much. I uh, do well, Aria. Oh, I need still need a forge. Forsake for just now. Right, Think the healing's auto cast? I really hope it is. They seem to be really reluctant to go into buildings sometimes. Here is uh, Lenya and Moonsilver. They're relevant to the other races. Presumably the... I think Lenya is relevant to el elves, so this will be relevant to dwarves, I guess. Gear up iron production a little. Put up a smelting works as close as possible to your mind. Yeah. Uh, you'll know if it's close enough because this will be like highlighted when you're like placing the smelting works. Minecraft Same holds true for this. Deliver the mind ore to the smelting works, Minecraft? <gasps> where it will be processed further. This means you will now receive the double quantity of resources per delivery. Yes, I'm on it. Simple workers can only deliver their resources to headquarters and monuments. All the craftsmen can deliver their iron ore to a smelting works, their wood to a sawmill, their stones to, to a stonemason's hut, or their food to order. a storehouse, which then doubles yes, the amount wait. of each delivery. I'm ready. Sir. Build a food yes, storehouse. I'm ready. 
When the food storehouse is finished, you can use food to regenerate the life points and mana reserves in your summoned units. This is especially important if you summon several magic units. Your avatar and your heroes, by the way, regenerate themselves without food. Quickly now. You summoned at least 15 combat units. I think I have more than 15. Follow me. If you follow the path past the desert and farther to the east, you will arrive at an enemy lookout. As soon as it makes sight contact, it will alarm its headquarters. Advance with your avatar, the hero, and at least 15 combat As soon as the lookout has discovered you, a yellow warning signal will appear to overcome you. The orcs have been alerted to your presence and will send out an assault wave to confront you. Okay. Destroy the orcs. Again, I was just seeing about the audio level, just seeing if it was fine. I tried to do the free play mode, but it, even though it's like single player, it wouldn't let me do single player. There's no way to attack move. It's really difficult to actually make sure everyone's getting into the fight. Adventure. It's actually quite frustrating, honestly. And yeah, their healing is autocast. It's quite useful. I remember this being a bit different, honestly. You know, like the AI was more cooperative, or what have you. Uh, rose tinted glasses. Kron. Of the like, our scouts are just trying to punch the building. Kill him. Uh, okay. New room. Oh no, this is the room. Okay. There's this whole other base down here. Oh, I think this is for further practice. Portal to end the prologue. I've actually never done this, but I just capped it myself too. I'm sorry. Forward. Congratulations. If you now look in your quest book, you will see that you have now solved the two previously opened steps. The leader of the orcs was carrying the rune. Loot the corpse and take the rune if you not already done so. Now go back to Joshua at the human monument and talk to him. Yeah, we can. There's more we could do down here, but it's optional. I'm actually just gonna leave. I'm sorry, I can't bring myself to do it. Not that any of the any radio here matters. Um, you know, it's you don't get an you don't get to keep on. So. You know, we could have gone and talked back to these people, but, but no, apparently not. We just kind of did do their job for them.
can release the monuments, uh, which will cause you to just lose all your units. But I guess you could um, use the monument for something else instead. Wait, when you release the last monument of a hero race, you automatically and instantly lose all units of that type. Oh, so you can have multiple monuments. Zarek's accursed mm. eyes, the rune, you did it. Even if I can barely stand to look at a rune warrior, nobody else could have managed that feat. Master Rowan will be relieved. You have received additional experience points. <laughs> gained one level. With every new level, your avatar will have more life points and mana reserves. You will also receive skill and attribute points that can be used to further improve your avatar. Five star points, two abilities. Open the inventory. Can't change on for unheard of. Category, character information. Maybe this is what they want me to do inherently. Train. On the right of the window, select your avatar if it's not already activated. On the left of the window, you will see the skills of your avatar, and in the middle, its attributes. Distribute the new attribute points, for example, for strength or wisdom. To do this, click in the window on the small arrows directly beside the numbers of the attributes. The individual attributes stand for the characteristics of a figure. If you pass over an attribute with a mouse pointer, the help window will explain the meaning of the individual numbers. Now distribute the new skill points. Click on new skills and select light combat. Distribute the second point wherever you like by clicking on one of the small arrows. I'll just quickly gather my strength and then head out. Due to your improved skills in light combat, you have now received an additional combat skill. It's called Berserk. You will find this melee combat skill in your spell book. Transfer Berserk to your magic memory. Close your inventory. Ready and able. Very well. Combat abilities and some magic spells are not cast at a target, but rather only work on the caster himself. Test the Berserk ability by selecting your character and clicking the symbol below in the action bar, or above left on the portrait. Oh, that's cool. That looks cool. When you trigger the Berserk ability, your avatar causes an enormous damage to the enemy for a short period of time. This can be very helpful in an emergency situation, although you cannot apply this attack again until after a few minutes. Now speak to Joshua again. It's slowly getting to be time for me to head out. It was good to fight by your side again. Come along. I'll accompany you to the portal. Here it comes. <laughs> God damn. Um, so whatever way I see that, they just look like um, they're just squished down. It's funny image. That's annoying. Funny scene coming up. Zerba, have mercy. Will this never end? That will be interesting. <laughs> Rowan. Okay. 
Damn it. Did I ruin it? One moment later, and we would have been lost. I did ruin it. Never mind. We'll get to see Chance again later on. Basically, he will cast spells at it, and then will run around punching them. I, I shouldn't have had my troops there. Do you have the rune? Tahira salvaged it from the ruins. Here it is. Tahira, I thank you. You have... Served you well? I can understand your fury. Believe me, it was worth it. This rune is the key to our future. And past. But I don't want to bother you any longer. Live in peace, Tahira. We will not meet again. Farewell, Tahira. <laughs> Apparently, while we were working, he's just been like getting into the ale supplies. Going by how much he's swerving there. But yeah, um, I did kind of, I shouldn't have moved my army there. But basically, he, the guy would have gone into a fist fight with them. The magic portal, You'll see it plant if... The path to the south, ...where further opponents are waiting along with some useful hints, which you don't necessarily need for the first maps. I'll figure it out, don't worry. But yeah, he just fist fights. It's, 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 it's hysterical. Right, Mage uses fist! <laughs> Ah, uh, I wish I hadn't ruined that. But still, like I said, you'll get to see it plenty of times later on. But yeah, I'm going to just make that huge, one huge episode. 